Hello everyone and welcome to Shopron. Welcome to the first summer school of the EduWorks Consortium, which is actually great to see all the faces here. This is the first time I think this crowd meets, uh, but not the last time. We will we promised four summer schools during the lifetime of the project, so there will be enough opportunities to, to continue the discussion what we start um, during this week. Um, so in, in the next hour or so, uh, I just want to set the scene. We just want to, or I just want to talk a bit about what's going to happen during the next week, uh, 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 what the program will be like. And then I would like to uh, talk a bit about EduWorks itself, like what did we promise? Not really about the content, because I guess you're all very familiar about what is EduWorks about. Uh, I just want to draw some attention on what did we promise uh, to the European Commission? What do we have to deliver um, during the lifetime of the project? And then, um, at the end, uh, uh, we will have uh, around seven o'clock, I think, uh, at seven o'clock, we will uh, go up to the first floor where we will have dinner and we will watch the most important event of the day, <laughs> especially for uh, University of Siegen and some <laughs> colleagues from Corvino. Uh, and uh, yeah, I hope the best for you, actually. Okay, so. A few words about um, the setup of this week. And before I go into day one, I want to draw a bit of an attention to these people here with two cameras uh, and, um, and the sound uh, recording device in the middle. So what we want to do is to uh, make a small movie about the summer school and about EduWorks in general. What are our objectives? Uh, how the summer school uh, looks like, how does it feel to be there, what are the main topics uh, we are discussing here. So um, these people will film basically everything. <laughs> everything what we do, everything what we, and they will record everything what we say. So be careful, these devices are very sensitive. <laughs> So even they can hear what are you talking uh, in, in the back clear and loudly. Um, and at the end, we, we're going to make a movie. So we are not There'll publishing. There is censorship at the end. <laughs> so there is censorship. Uh, the end result will be a, like a 10 minute long movie about, about the summer school itself. All the supervisors and all our guest uh, trainers will need to give a small interview uh, uh, during this week about EduWorks, how your work, how their work is related to EduWorks, uh, what's the impact of the training on the EduWorks consortium, and so on and so forth. Uh, what's your vision on the research agenda of EduWorks? So be prepared for an interview like this. And also, there will be interviews with the fellows. Uh, how do you feel uh, in, in the summer school? What do you expect from, from this project? Um, impressions, uh, uh, expectations, so on and so forth. So, so don't be afraid if these people um, approach you with questions. Try to act natural. <laughs> I know it's, it's difficult, but uh, try it. And hopefully, at the end, we will have, uh, have a, a very nice movie, uh, what we can uh, show to our parents, at least, at the end. Um, so I don't know if I uh, forgot something uh, or not. So I, I covered all. So day one today, uh, as I said, it's like a day one, day zero. It's like a day zero on a festival. Uh, warm up uh, for the... Uh, for the next week. As I said, I will just talk a bit about what's going to happen, and then I will talk uh, a, a bit about what did we promise, and then we go up, we have uh, some nice food, drinks, and uh, we will enjoy the game. Tomorrow is your big day, fellows. Um, that will be the first time um, you're going to present um, uh, your research topic uh, for the consortium, but not the last time. 
only after we uh, had a keynote talk from Alec, Alec Serli, who is sitting here now, uh, from GITP. Um, um, yeah, we have a history already, a long history back in, in, in Amsterdam. So after uh, your, speak, uh, your speech, uh, we will enter to the, um, uh, to the fellows presentation zone. It will be very tough. Uh, it's, it's going to be a long day, 15 minutes presentations and 10 minutes feedback for all of you. If you haven't sent your presentation to me, then before tomorrow morning, definitely, because I want to put everything on this computer so everything flows uh, uh, well tomorrow and we can exchange uh, speakers uh, well. And that we are right on time, because uh, the time schedule is quite um, uh, stressed, uh, I must say. The lineup will be according to the booklet, which is also in front of you. So I think we start with the labor economics people. I think Rockwell will be the first, if I'm not mistaken. Be prepared. <laughs> and um, I will circulate a link. Uh, by email to everyone uh, before tomorrow morning because we want to give you some feedback on your uh, 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 talk. So all the people, all the audience will uh, 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 give you an anonymous feedback what that person got from your discussion, uh, your presentation, how was it, uh, was it understandable, so on and so forth. And we will provide you with this personalized feedback uh, uh, later uh, after the summer school. So you can learn and improve uh, your presentation skills. <coughs> after that long day, we will have a guided tour in the city center and we will have a, a, a dinner in the city center. Of course, if you have questions anytime, let me know. So, uh, Gabor, is, it, is it possible to walk to the city center? It's always possible. But is it a long walk? <laughs> it's like 20 minutes, if I'm not oh, mistaken. Okay. 40. 40. Okay, <laughs> then it's 40 minutes. Okay. Uh, and I think the restaurant, so the guided tour starts at 7, right? And the restaurants, uh, we have dinner in the restaurant at 9. So it's a bit late dinner. But after the walk, so... Um, we will have coffee breaks, eat enough during the coffee, coffee breaks to have enough ammunition for, uh, for the tour. Um, and um, yeah, we will have a, sh a, a walk in the city center. We will, uh, I think we can get into uh, one of the famous landmarks of the city, uh, the, the fire tower, I think it's called. So it will be exciting. Uh, day two, uh, for the fellows, uh, we organized two workshops. One is on research philosophy and ethics in the morning. Uh, and in the afternoon is uh, a workshop on an emotional side of, uh, of your PhD studies. Um, so how to manage emotion and expectations uh, from your PhD. Um, and um, uh, a trainer will uh, fly in from um, actually Trinity College, Dublin, and she's a very nice person. And so you can uh, have an in a group discussion on all these issues. While you are doing that, the supervisory board will have a separate meeting. We will discuss uh, all the necessary administration or project management uh, stuff, uh, uh, what we have to do. Anyway, at the end, uh, we all go to a wine cellar. Uh, I think all, it starts again at 7. We do wine tasting in a, in a local wine cellar. Schopron is, um, is one of uh, the wine regions of Hungary. It's actually a quite nice wine region, so yeah, I'm, I'm quite sure you will be happy with the wine, what you can try here. And then uh, we will have dinner uh, also in this... Uh, uh, at this winemaker. So Wednesday, all day long, uh, fellows uh, do an academic writing workshop. Uh, supervisors will have synergy meetings. That means um, we have to work on how fellows' projects will uh, 
how to say, how fellows will be able to work together on some ideas in the, in the future. So we will have to give some thoughts uh, how to do that. And Wednesday will be the day when the supervisor will do the interviews with the, with the filming people. And at the end, uh, we will have dinner here in the hotel. Day four, in the morning, academic writing workshop. In the afternoon, it's, it's a free morning for the supervisors. Uh, unless we still have something to discuss or something to be arranged, uh, we will see. Uh, and in the afternoon, we will have a, a, a bus tour around Chopron. So we will uh, visit again uh, a sort of historical landmark uh, of the so-called Iron Curtain, which divided East and West uh, before uh, uh, 1989. And then we will visit a big uh, a castle um, nearby. Um, <coughs> nearby Chopron, in a smaller place called Fertud. Uh, and we will have a guided tour there. And uh, you will have some free uh, uh, time to explore the surroundings, the garden of the castle, the, uh, the, uh, absorb the castle atmosphere. And then we jump on the bus again, and we will drive to an, a, third, a second castle, and we will have dinner in that second castle. Day five. Uh, we will have another keynote lecture, but it, it will be more like a workshop from a journal editor working for Asavie. And then uh, Kea will um, lead a panel discussion together with the journal editor and uh, with the help of the supervisory board on uh, publishing, how to publish, uh, what are the key criteria, factors, what are the key do's and don'ts what are the do's and don'ts of uh, publishing nowadays? And then uh, that's the morning. In the afternoon, Fazel and University and CISE uh, will organize a workshop on um, on a uh, web what, uh, researcher researcher dashboard. Uh, uh, our researcher dashboard. Um, uh, where we all need uh, contribution from both from fellows and from supervisors. And uh, we end that day with a farewell dinner since uh, quite a few people will leave um, the next day. So we decided to do the farewell dinner on Friday instead of uh, uh, Saturday. We will uh, go to the other side of the city and we will roast a piglet. <coughs> together um, and it will next to the uh, it will be next to a summer bob um, uh, circuit so we can also uh, uh, jump on those bobs and uh, and try them out ourselves <coughs> so the last and final day communication skills training all day uh, for, uh, for fellows, it's compulsory. For supervisors, if you feel like joining, uh, you are more than welcome to join. As far as I understood from, because Maku already had some experience with the trainer, as far as I understood, uh, it will be great. And I also talked to the guy a few times and uh, he um, seems to be very, very good. So I will be there, definitely, and uh, I encourage uh, everyone to be present and uh, uh, be part of, uh, of this. I think it will be more like a game uh, than a traditional workshop. And then we will have a final dinner here in the restaurant and we say the last words before we meet again in January. Okay, uh, last note, if you have any problems throughout um, the week, let me know. Here is my number. The number is also in, um, in the booklet. And Gary, who is sitting at the end of this row, uh, he's, uh, yeah. he is actually from this city. So this is one reason why we came here, because he's from this city. And he, um, he, he can help us out, and he can help you out if you have problems with uh, language issues, with the taxi drivers, uh, whatever, whatever problems you have. Let us know. Let's spend a bit of time 
on two things. One, on the, I would, after, before I talk a bit about what we promised to the European Commission, um, I, um, I want to spend a bit of time on introducing uh, uh, the introductions. So um, I think the best is if, um, yeah, I was wondering how to do that, but, but the best is probably if we just start from, um, uh, from this side of the table. And I, because I guess you all know me already, so I, I don't think I have to talk a lot about myself, but maybe Christian, if you can start <laughs> introducing yourself, a few words, what's your background, um, uh, which uh, group uh, you are part of, and uh, maybe what do you expect from, from, from Edworks or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so as I'm the last one tomorrow, I'm the first one today. <laughs> I'm Christian Bühler, I'm from Germany originally. I have the huge chance to join the Corvinus Technology Transfer Center. And we get involved at uh, the Corvinus University. Okay. My background is computer science with a bit of electrical engineering applications. <coughs> so in the first place it seems like a bit off. But uh, since we at the company had a bit of uh, Knowledge management background, and I have formally joined the knowledge management group in Wien. I'm uh, good connected. My hopes, no, my field. I'm working on something which is called adaptive testing. Since we have to know the presentation, I should not tell too much about it. But as we hear about testing, we are testing on some kind of human, and we should get results with somehow the depth of person. And, um, my hopes to move further. I think the network is the best possibility to not only connect, but to learn something. We always have the word of synergy. So each one knows a bit, and uh, together we could make something more of it. And let's see what we create. Great. Okay, so I'm Dex then. Uh, my name is Mike, and um, I'm doing my PhD with Kobe as well in Budapest. And my background is in operational research with my thesis in the area of um, data mining. Um, and for the um, project at Covino, I focus on the area of profiling students and in terms of uh, learning style. I think we have a chance to, I will have a chance to talk about it more tomorrow. And uh, yes, um, my expectations about this, I think, every person in terms of uh, personal development. Yes, and, uh, <laughs> Just, <yeah. laughs> I'm Andreas Gaber from Corvino Technology Transfer Center, also from <coughs> Corvinus University. And uh, I'm doing uh, co supervising uh, these uh, two guys, and uh, my role is uh, jumping over their nerves. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my name is Vera, <coughs> you can call me Sole. Everyone's calls me Sole, so. Um, I'm from, I come from Trinity College Dublin, I'm doing a business in Trinity, and I'm working in Shaw and Claudia. In my area is uh, technology, enhanced learning. And I'm not part of other worlds, so I'm really happy. And really lucky to be here today. Um, so thank you for taking me on board. Okay, my name is Sean Dowling. Um, originally from Ireland, and I'm back to Trinity College Dublin again for 25 years. Um, I've worked as a software engineer originally, but the last 10 years I've been working as an education technologist. So I've been working in the area of lifelong learning, um, specifically looking at mobile learning and mobile learning transitions. So I'm looking forward to working with everybody in the next three to four years. Hi, I'm Mariano Mertino. Uh, I'm Italian, but I currently like doing a PhD in public policy at Central European University with uh, Martin and Hannes as my supervisor. I have a background in uh, economics, and uh, my research is going to be <coughs> mostly about measuring like skill mismatched labor markets. So, like, mm, there's there's, an, uh, there's a lot already like in this, but. Uh, I will try to sort of like uh, also perhaps uh, using new data that is becoming available 
as we speak, like to sort of, uh, you know, shed further light on the way of like uh, measuring skin mismatch and the different components of skin mismatch. What I expect from the um, from the network is that, you know, I think it's a, there is a high potential of also like mixing all these different approaches and different, uh, I mean, subjects and or maybe also in terms of like data as the, I mean, the L word, like the, the word presenting, and I think it, the potential is really high and, you know, I'm really happy to be on board and I look forward to collaborating with all of you and thank you. Uh, I'm Sudipa. I'm uh, uh, originally from India, but now I'm placed in Salamanca, in University of Salamanca, and uh, uh, I've joined EduWorks as a PhD student of labor economics. My supervisor is Professor Rafael Munoz, Munoz de Bustillo and uh, mm -hmm. Professor Pablo. That's it. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Marta, originally from Romania, now based in Budapest with Mariano and Supervisor Martin. And um, I'm doing a PhD in Labor Economics and Public Policy. Uh, my background is in public policy with a focus on migration, but I've been working till recently with the labor market uh, focused institute, research institute in Italy, so where skills mismatch was a big uh, issue, so hence my interest for that. Uh, um, as you may have uh, guessed, I'll be working on skills mismatch and I'll kind of try to to uh, learn to bit with migration. So yeah, you'll find out more about it tomorrow. Hi, I'm Raquel. I'm from Spain and I'm working at Salamanca University, again in Spain because I was living three years abroad, one year in Italy and two years in Brussels. I, my supervisors are, well, I don't know, like, so deep, I mean, we, we are the luckiest one because I think that we have almost four supervisors. <laughs> <laughs> well, what if that's We are working in our, in our university, we are working all together, so it's quite good for us. And so deep, I mean, we will be in Dublin working with a partner that is Kike that he's also part of the network because he works in Eurofound. So thanks to him, we are going to be there and we are going to try to do something with him and with the database from Eurofound. And I'm working in a skills mismatch and tomorrow as I'm going to be the first one, I'm going to tell what we are doing. <coughs> so hello, I'm Stefano, I'm uh, Italian. But actually, I'm based in uh, in Amsterdam now at uh, IAS, at the Amsterdam Institute for Advanced Labor Studies. I am an economist. My background is an uh, economist. Actually, I'm one of the uh, two only fellows here who's not doing the PhD, but I'm a postdoc fellow of a strange uh, uh, animal. Uh, we are rare animals. Uh, <laughs> actually, I'm the only one, I guess, here because Pablo yeah. won't come. I'm uh, expecting a lot from this project. I'm, what I'm actually, I, I see that I, I'm an economist and I do like uh, working with large uh, data sets and I see here that there are a lot of uh, possibility and uh, potential to know people who are actually from fields where they do de develop uh, strategies to work with large data sets. So this is one of the most exciting things that I see in uh, this project from my point of view. So I hope that at the end of this postdoc I will have learned a lot in, uh, in this direction. Yeah, hello everybody, my name is Claudia and I'm from El Salvador. And I'm based in Trinity College and Marco is my supervisor. My background is in computer science, specifically multimedia retrieval and sentiment analysis. But now I'm in the area of mobile learning and I'm enjoying it a lot. I'm learning a lot <laughs> and I'm very happy also to be here. And I'm also sure that I will learn a lot from all of you, from the different things you are doing and I hope we can also collaborate in the near future. Hi, I'm Sofia. I'm one of Edward's PhD candidates based in Amsterdam. Um, 
Together with Eloisa, we will work on investigating the potential of JAD knowledge for fitting individuals into JAD, but in the context of uh, workplace learning, training and development. Uh, I'm originally from Serbia, where I graduated in psychology. Later on, I did my master's in work and organizational psychology in Bologna and in Coimbra. So, wow, we are like very diverse. I think we are 25 people and with uh, 50 educational backgrounds and uh, 60 <laughs> countries in which we live okay. in. So I'm really looking forward to uh, see how all these pieces will fit together <coughs> and to discovering in which direction it will stimulate me and my future. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, my name is Eloisa. Um, I come from Italy, Rome, where I graduated in my master and my bachelor in psychology, industrial organizational psychology. And now I'm in Amsterdam, at the Amsterdam Business School, together with Sofia, Hannah, Vlad, Gary, and our supervisors are more <laughs> diverse as well, Gabor and Stefan, that is not here. And uh, well, as Sophia said, we are uh, working in the Department of Human Resource Management, Organizational Behavior. So we are trying to see how we can contribute with our background to this overall aim of matching and mis uh, investigating matching and mismatching processes. Hello, my name is Gary Gaiushi. You can call me Gary. I'm working uh, at the University of Amsterdam. I'm working in the project management of Aduberks. Uh, and since my, this is my hometown and I organize the social events, I hope you will really, <laughs> I hope you really enjoy the next week. Uh, and my intention is to show you every, every beauty of this part of the country. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi, my name is Hanna. Um, I'm not an official Edinburgh Stella. I call myself the adopted Edinburgh's PhD um, because I'm part of this Antotech project, one of the other amazing projects from Gabor and Stefan. Um, so I got slipped in like that. Um, I'm also based at the University of Amsterdam at the business school uh, where I, I was born in Amsterdam and I did there my bachelor and master in uh, business studies with a specialization <coughs> in human resource management. Um, and in my research I'm focusing on the job part and the matching. So how can we analyze jobs and how can we understand jobs and how can we do this with new and data uh, collection and uh, analysis. Um, I already got a lot out of Edwards because I'm now here, which otherwise would not be possible. And I would love to see uh, what, is, what else is possible and to see where matches can be made between PhDs mm -hmm. and to see how we can collaborate more. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm sorry because I've been doing this for the last 10 years, but I still feel nervous whenever I introduce myself. <laughs> okay, I'm Vladimir, and I have a background in applied mathematics, and I also work in a data mining. And uh, I'm extremely friendly, approachable, <laughs> and I'm open to ideas. <laughs> so I will not talk about my study because I'll talk about it tomorrow. So you can have your questions. So if you want to know more about me, you can email me. Maybe. Yeah, I'm always open. And um, my expectation is really to improve myself as a researcher, to learn more, to collaborate. Since we come from different backgrounds, I think that we can. Part of the program should be how to uh, change the world since we are uh, uh, and uh, I think that's all. Thank you. Okay, uh, my name is Tisai. I'm from Ethiopia. Uh, my background is uh, uh, I got my BSc and MSc in Information Systems and Science from Addis Ababa University, Ethiopia. Uh, and I have my background in Statistical Machine Translation where I manipulate the big, uh, uh, big data set to, to find the co-occurrence and find the translation of one language <coughs> to another. And this is a, a very good opportunity because I'm going to work on big data here. And now I'm, I'm based in, in the University of Zeeken, Institute of Knowledge Management, Knowledge-Based Systems and Knowledge Management. 
Yeah, and I think a lot of, I will get a lot of knowledge from this diversified field. And I, I also hope that I will share whatever I will get. Uh, that's a big network and yeah, I hope a lot. Thank you. <coughs> Hi, my name is Imaklara Medina Sanchez. You can call me Maku. <laughs> that's what everyone calls me. I'm a professor in, the, in Trinity College in the School of Computer Science and Statistics. I supervise Solid, Sean and Claudia. <laughs> I'm the PI for the EdWex project in Trinity College. And my, um, my area, one of my big areas of interest is mobile learning. And in particular, within the context of edit work, it's lifelong learning with a mobile learning uh, approach to it. In general, I'm interested in how technology can support teaching and learning processes in formal, formal and non-formal settings. So that's every time that you, you learn anything and how technologies can do that. Right. My expectations from the project, um, well, for the, for the summer school, for me, are mainly for my students, and I hope that they'll learn a lot, that they'll mingle with you, that they'll find a, a clear idea of where they, they want to be area, specific area where they want to uh, work. And I think, in general, my expectation for the summer school is that, because you're all very new to the whole area, that you kind of get a sense of what, what does it entail to do a PhD, okay, and what your expectations should be. And that you set yourself um, uh, realistic expectations so that the journey is an enjoyable one, even if it's going to be a challenging one. Hi, I'm Fazer from the University of Siegen. I'm representing the Institute of Professor Fati, Institute of Knowledge Based System and Knowledge Management in this project. It's uh, about Four or five years we are collaborating with Stefan, that I should say in parentheses, it's a great pity, I would say, it's a big pity that he could not participate in this uh, event, even though there are good news in, in the line, so. <laughs> but um, uh, <coughs> we have uh, two projects together right now, the Metasys and this EduWorks project. Um, expectation from this project is that I'm picturing myself always as an interdisciplinary person based on my background, so between engineering, computer science and project management. And my expectation is quite high from this project to bring different disciplines together and to bridge them and to uh, be that productive to um, achieve to some new promising results in the frame of this project. So. I'm really uh, motivated to participate in all of the sessions to see how we can really make this bridge. Hello, my name is Alec, Alex Early. Um, I uh, uh, work at the University of Rotterdam as an assistant to professor, but my main job is as research director to GITP. GITP is one of the associate partners of the Amsterdam Business School within the EduWorks pro program. Uh, it's one of the largest HR companies in the Netherlands. I'll tell you a bit more about that uh, tomorrow. Um, I trained as an experimental psychologist. I did my PhD in medical psychology and I'm now working as work in organizational uh, psychology, so that's a bit of diversity. And that's what I like about the group here. So many different disciplines uh, all together, all out on this new quest as far as uh, a new way of looking at jobs is concerned. And I'm very enthusiastic about the whole project and especially expectations about the outcome of it in about four years time presumably but I'll tell you a bit more about that uh, tomorrow so very pleased to be here thank you for the invitation Martin, Martin for Klaveren uh, I'm also not uh, a part of the EduWorks although a little bit because I'm the husband of Kea <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, we work we are one of these very old couples do, do a lot together uh, we work together at the IAS uh, of the University of Amsterdam also. Uh, my background is uh, also very diverse. I always say I'm a kind of labor economist stroke sociologist, but this does cover the whole thing, of course. Um, I worked uh, uh, for quite a while, 17 years in the trade unions. The last 10 years I was heading the research department of the main FMV. Uh, trade Union Conference in the Netherlands, uh, then I did a lot of other things, mainly consultancy, and the last 10 years I came back to my alma mater, the University of Amsterdam, uh, where uh, the last 10 years Kieran and I did a lot of joint research, especially on the uh, wage indicator database, and 
uh, we wrote a lot of articles and the last few years a few books and I really love the noble art of writing mm -hmm. uh, and uh, do a lot of editing uh, also for example for some journals work employment societies and dirt journals and others that's what I really like and I expect uh, you're such a real huge bunch of uh, promising young people I expect to get my brains out in the last few days and say, oh God, what can I learn more than this? <laughs> Thanks for the invitation, though, very much. Okay. My name is Kea Teiter from the University of Amsterdam, from the Amsterdam Institute for Advanced Labour Studies. Um, I'm, I'm the coordinator, the final coordinator of the Edeworks project, and um, I'm supervising Stefano. As well I as to sorry, I forgot to mention. No problem. No, no, no. It's a <laughs> as well as Pablo, Pablo de Pedraza, who could not be here because he will start his uh, postdoc position in Amsterdam next month. But he still has not found a house. Whereas he wants to wants to move with his whole family. So he's a kind of excited about whether he can manage all things. So at the University of Amsterdam, in the IAS, there will be two postdocs, and Stefano and Mibi have already started working, and with Pablo we will start working next month. Um, I myself, I'm a sociologist, though I worked in the Department of Economics for more than 50 years at the University of Amsterdam, so I'm quite familiar with economics. Uh, and my main interest is what, basically, what is going on in occupations. And so, what are the occupational boundaries? Who is setting occupational boundaries, whether it's the organization or the job holder, and what is the interaction in between them, the two? Uh, and currently, I'm drafting a, a new proposal, it's almost submitted, on collecting job titles in 99 countries and that's about 50 languages and we aim to set up a big matching pro uh, project so that we can match occupational titles and the, the text of the job descriptions that belong to it into the occupational classification. So that, and if we manage to do that, that is, ooh, that would be really great because Overall, there's the, the occupational classification, which is worldwide uh, set and, and defined, but that has, at the most detailed level, 400 occupational titles, whereas in any given country, there may be 10,000 to 100,000 job titles in any current, um, current year. So how to match these 100,000 job titles and all messy stuff into the classification. That's the main challenge for the for the years ahead. So maybe one day we can also cooperate with this project or, or see whether we, there's some synergy with AdaWorks for this project because it will deliver loads of unstructured data that has to be classified. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. So, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Martin Kahnetz. I'm a professor at the Central European University. I also work with ISA in Bonn, in Germany, and we set up an institute also in uh, Bratislava. Well, what connects all this is labor, labor markets, labor economics. Economics. So I'm a labor economist by training, but I like to work across disciplines. So, when, whenever we run a project, we work with many disciplines because labor market is essentially crossing all disciplines, all social science disciplines, so this is this makes uh, very good sense that in other works we are, you know, uh, we are uh, putting uh, in the pot all the uh, people with different disciplinary backgrounds and this is something that's very appealing to me, so I'm very happy to be part of this. Uh, uh, I find it very important. Well, what uh, what is sort of uh, within the, labor is very broad, so within labor what I do is uh, still very broad, but vulnerable groups in the labor market, meaning uh, migrants, social excluded groups, uh, poverty, and those topics. 
And what I realized that for sort of integration of these groups, what is very important is uh, skill matching. Uh, so, so this was one of the things that somehow, somehow inspired m uh, me to to uh, look into uh, skill matching uh, because uh, for migrants this is essential. Uh, we know this, but also migrants can help uh, economists to better match uh, skills with occupation and all this. So this this is very very you know substance of a very substantive issue in the, in the labor market. So I, I become became very very interested in this. So I'm very happy to be part of it. And what I expect from this is, of course, to you know move the frontier and to find out better ways how to deal with this uh, on the sort of theoretical uh, grounds, but also empirical, and then policy, connect this to policy. This, this is something that I would be very happy to be part of. Perfect, thank you. So as it seems one one milestone we already reached, that is the <laughs> diversity. We yes, promised well, diversity, yeah. here is the diversity. Yes, so 17 <laughs> countries, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, that's quite a lot. And basically almost every single people, uh, every single person has a different background. So this is, this is great, but on contrary, it's, it's going to be very challenging. Uh, <laughs> for you. To discuss, <laughs> yeah, uh, for me definitely. Uh, and one more uh, note, one postdoc is still missing, yeah. University of Zegen, uh, uh, actually UK, are you, when, when Pablo is going to start? Uh, I, I think by August 1 or August, mid-August, some, some, in a month's time. Perfect, so that's quite soon. And the third postdoc will start in, when is that? In two years, I think. Yeah, that's yeah. one and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's October 2015 yeah. at University of Siegen. Okay, so that's the consortium. Um, plus, uh, we still have to mention that we have a number of associated partners. So we started with 13. Two were dropped out uh, already. Uh, so at the moment, we have 11 associated partners, as you see behind me. But there are a number of associated partners already interested in joining us. So what, why do we have associated partners? So associated partners can provide you with data, provide you with training, provide you with experience, and provide you with problems. So uh, I would say, I, uh, me, myself, I don't want to start inventing problems. There are so many problems. Uh, already there, we should just pick the right ones. And th this is where associated partners can, um, can help you. So that's why I think this is now the right time to, to, to get into discussions with uh, your designated associated partners, or basically any associated partners uh, uh, within the consortium to, to see what are their problems, how can you align those problems with your research, with the problems you are facing, uh, uh, and, and, and see what comes, of the, uh, comes out, of the, uh, out of them. A few words about uh, scheduling of, um, of the project. From now on, we will meet every half year. So the next big meeting will be in Dublin in January. Probably that's the best... Uh, best <laughs> I see there's some surprises, but uh, no, me, yeah. <laughs> but probably that's the best period of time to visit Dublin. Yeah. January, sunny. <laughs> <laughs> when is it sunny? Warm, <laughs> sunny Dublin. <laughs> anyway, that's yeah. Very yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's <laughs> longer warm <Walmart. laughs> Um So that that will be the next time we meet. Uh, there are two types of uh, events. Um, actually three, but two type of events when we must meet, and that's, those are the project meetings and the summer schools. This first summer school is special because we thought we reserved this summer school only for us to get to know each other a bit and uh, to, you know, to start the conversations what we need to start. And it's better to do it by ourselves. But as of next year, we want to open this up. So we want to invite uh, PhD students, researchers from outside of the consortium uh, uh, with an open call. Come uh, and tell us what you are doing. Let's uh, continue discussion openly. So that will be more open. 
but we also saw, saw that we still need a space for ourselves and those spaces will be the project meetings. So once per year we have a project meeting where this crowd will uh, gather and you will have to do the exercise what you're going to do tomorrow. Uh, uh, present your research, present uh, how, uh, uh, how did you improve since uh, your last presentation. Um, and uh, yeah, we want to follow up your progress um, uh, during the lifetime of the project and give you feedback. Um. Then um, there will be two uh, workshops. The workshops are basically small <coughs> conferences uh, and uh, these conferences will be the venue when you're going to have to present your research for the greater public. Of course you can go to any other conferences, bigger conferences, but this, these uh, uh, workshops are dedicated uh, uh, for uh, uh, your talks, for your presentations. Then, as you all know, one the <coughs> sort of uh, most important objective of the project is training, to train the fellows to be researchers of the, uh, the lifetime of the projects. And uh, uh, you will receive two types of, actually three types of trainings. One, local training locally at your local organization, which uh, 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 belongs to your uh, uh, local PhD training program. We uh, don't have any control over that. That's compulsory for most of you. But for instance, in, in the Netherlands, or at least at the UFA, we don't have that. So our PhDs will uh, have to pick their own r uh, courses from basically <coughs> according to their research interests. Um, so that's one. Then uh, we want to provide you with research specific courses. So once you will know quite well what type of research are you going to do, uh, you will be able to specify what type of methods, what uh, uh, type of analysis you want to carry out. Then we have to uh, sit down. You have to sit down first with your supervisor, of course. Uh, and then we have to sit down and see who else in this consortium uh, needs that uh, type of building, uh, training so we can uh, build up a training schedule um, for these uh, research, uh, research specific skills. And the last one, what you also see behind me, is courses on transferable skills. So skills what basically all researchers um, need to possess and this is also the target of this summer school. To, to train you a bit in ethics, uh, academic writing, uh, communications. Um, but there are a number of um, other items on the agenda, so you should expect uh, more uh, uh, courses in this area. Um, yeah, there, there is a long list. If you see the, um, the proposal, probably you have, you have seen this uh, long list of possible courses. So there, there as I say, uh, there are loads of uh, 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 research-specific research courses around the world and we have the budget, we have the money to invite uh, excellent trainers to our consortium so we can learn from the best, uh, if you like. Another important part of your training will be secondments. And uh, EduWorks fellows uh, will need to do two secondments um, during the lifetime of the project. Uh, what we promise for the European Commission is that every fellow will visit the partner institution throughout the lifetime of the project. And we also promise that every fellow will visit an um, associated partner during the lifetime of the pro uh, project. And the aim of this visit is again conversations, finding uh, similarities in research, uh, trying to come up with maybe a common study, uh, uh, write an article, a scientific article together, name it. There you, can, you can come up with a number of reasons why you want to uh, uh, visit another partner. But again, meetings and summer schools like this are important because here we can sort of start thinking about how, how to work together, what are the topics, what people like, where pe what people want to pick up and uh, move forward with. So 
keep this in mind that during the lifetime of the project you will have to do you will have to go to another partner you will have to do uh, a common research uh, uh, with someone else um, this, uh, uh, these visits should, uh, uh, should not be longer than six months, but it is really up to you and your research needs uh, how long they should be. Six months each? Uh, okay. No, so maximum six months, but if you go to an associated partner, those in my mind, those should be, uh, I mean it depends on what, again, depends on what you want to do with, the, uh, with that visit. So I can imagine that there is someone like, I think, with Eurofund and Salamanca, they have a very close relationship, so I can imagine that uh, the fellows will spend many months uh, in Dublin to work on data sets to uh, work on research. Deliverables. So probably, again, you all know that uh, uh, Fellows on a PhD level should have four manuscripts uh, finished by the end of the project and for postdocs the requirement is two. Uh, these manuscripts should aim at high quality academic journals. High quality means, uh, you know, on one hand you have to follow your local regulations. Uh, usually there is a journal list at all organizations and uh, you should just uh, target those journals. But ideally, these journals have high impact factors, so these uh, uh, really uh, important journals uh, in the field. Then we want to publish an EduWorks book. And the book is a sort of collection of the best articles uh, uh, we've wrote. So it's not that you have to write four articles and a book chapter, you just have to write four articles and then we, add, we take one out and we edit um, uh, those articles together in a, in a book. Uh, then uh, those people who uh, are PhD students, they have to submit the first version of their PhDs by the end of the project. We promise two EduWorks workshops uh, at year two and at year four. So next year we're going to um, organize the first one and we will uh, close the project with a workshop. Then we promise that we will organize a monthly uh, EduWorks webinars. Uh, these, these have started, uh, so now um, probably we just have to get into a rhythm and collect enough topics uh, um, to, to move on uh, with those. And um, at the end of the project, we have to submit a training report, um, an EduWorks training report, and that should detail what type of training each and every person from this consortium, uh, each and every fellow from this consortium uh, uh, got. Um, another important uh, segment I wanted to talk about is dissemination. So we want to communicate with the world uh, outside of this uh, consortium, obviously. Um, the main um, uh, domain of this communication will be our website. I guess you're all familiar with our website. Uh, we also have social media, so we have Facebook profile, we have a Facebook page, a LinkedIn, what else? Google Plus. Yeah. Twitter, of course. So if you, if you haven't followed those uh, uh, social media platforms, please do so. And furthermore, if you want to communicate throughout these platforms, let us know. Because uh, 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 your words, your uh, messages are more than welcome. And uh, send us our messages and uh, we will post them, we will put them uh, on, on those uh, channels. We will have a YouTube channel uh, soon, so once we will have these recordings, uh, we will edit them uh, into um, uh, a watchable format and we will upload them to, to YouTube. Uh, we are planning to uh, have EduWorks bibliographies, 
So we want to collect all the resources, what you need and what you used for your research. And we want to uh, uh, offer these bibliographies for the greater public as well. Of course, we will have uh, a list of publications on our website. Uh, if I count well, 15 <coughs> fellows, that's uh, uh, 70 plus uh, publications uh, in four years time, which is a huge number. Um, we want to con collect all your conference presentations, slides, anything you uh, prepared uh, in relation to your research or in relation to this project. So send directly all this content to, uh, to us so we can put them on the website, make uh, this content visible for everyone. And last but not least, we want to start a blog, uh, but uh, uh, this is always um, um, very difficult because uh, for a blog we need contributions. So just like uh, um, the webinar, I want to make this blog as a, a, a sort of bottom-up approach. So hopefully by the end of this week, I will see which one of you are interested in contributing this blog. And then we can sit down and think about the technology, how do we present, uh, uh, how do we edit, how do we post uh, um, uh, uh, messages uh, or posts uh, on, this, uh, on this blog. But uh, this is something uh, the project uh, would benefit from. So just to wrap up, uh, yes? yes. About the previous slide, um, we, we just did another summer school. And one of the things that we did in that summer school last week was that we had a Google Doc where we posted many journal articles that were not accessible, not freely accessible. So there's our university has access to X amount of journals and your university has access to another X amount and can we share those? Uh, and that was very helpful. So, so we, we, we posted whenever, you know, all those behind pay bar articles, we post them on a I, ho I think this is a good idea and I hope Fazil and say listen because this might be an interesting uh, requirement of the Edwards we dashboard. We were just uh, talking about the legal issues. Yeah, yeah so there is legal issues yes. about you making accessible uh, copyright material. Uh, yeah, yeah, but, but not when you do it in a closed Google Doc. So the, the link to the Google Doc is only circulated among the participants here. And then there and are, in Google my understanding, no legal issues. And in the Medicis project, for instance, uh, so if there are some articles which are really important, uh, you can ask the publisher. I think and sometimes you get, uh, you get access. Uh, perhaps a better way of doing that is a preprint version of any article. So you are actually allowed to put online and make publicly accessible any preprint, which is basically is the same document as your final print copy, right? Mm -hmm. So when you get your preprint, and often you can find that on the web, and often authors will give you that, and you can make that available, and that wouldn't have any legal implications. And many journals, they have, uh, they they move more forwards open access. Mm -hmm. So even uh, uh, paid articles uh, can be accessed now for free. I think this is, for instance, a question we can raise uh, on Friday mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. to this person who comes from SVA because they are doing this. So they, uh, they open up uh, some of their databases, uh, some of their journals uh, for researchers. But if it's Do open, it doesn't make sense to replicate it, right? No, but we can point out to I interesting out uh, um, mm. uh, publications. Yeah. So, Robert, may I have one more question? If you say send to us, let's make it more concrete. Yeah, send to me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> send, send to me. To, uh, That's the royal form. The royal form. And, we and <laughs> what, what about reporting uh, undertaken training 
So do, is, do you have a, a template? Because in the end, you need to report to, to the commission, these fellows have had this training, and you had already a training, so... This is something we will discuss on Tuesday. Okay, great. <laughs> And there's one question. Yeah. I, I think that you said that during the fourth year we are going to have a seminar or a workshop, but I think that we just have three years of PhD. I don't know, like in the previous one, you said like we are going to have two, say, two workshops per yeah. year. <coughs> but just during the three years. No, so during the, so the project lasts four years. During the four years, no, the EduWorks project. Ah, I'm talking about the EduWorks ah. project. The, the project lasts for four years, and during the four years, we will organize four summer schools, and we will organize four project meetings. And the attendance of these uh, of these uh, project meetings and seminars uh, are compulsory for uh, for for this for the students. There is a difference between okay, so there is the difference between the lifespan of the project, which is four years, right? And your PhDs which are three years. Okay, so the project has a duration of four years and the idea would be that there is six months at the beginning for us to set it up, to recruit people, right? So we recruited all of you and we needed time to do that and that's within the lifespan of the project and we have another six months at the end to close it off, right? And you have three years of funding to complete your PhD. Mm -hmm. And we've got leave wave at the beginning and at the end to set up the project and to close it down. So to yeah. be very specific, we have to close down the project by 30th of September 2017. So that's the end date. So everything which we have to do, or what we should do within the EduWorks project must be done before that date, because all the costs are only eligible until that point in time. So imagine you get an extension on your contract. Uh, it, it can only fit to this project if it ends uh, yeah, 30th of September 2017. We can't declare costs after that. That's it. Extensions are not possible anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it depends. So, for instance, uh, at the UFA, we um, managed to get a four-year contract for the fellows, but the fellows need to, need to teach. But still... But that's with the... Okay. Still, they have to finish their work what we promised in the project before the end of the project. So th your extension is a local arrangement which has nothing to do with EduWorks, right? EduWorks money for the fellows is only three years. Yeah. Exactly. And if anyone at a local level finds a different yeah, arrangement, exactly. that's different, exactly. right? Exactly. But the EduWorks project for the fellows is only, only three, three years. years. Yep. Yeah. So three years of their time is financed from EduWorks the extra year is financed by the university. This is how it works. Well, basically, we have to organize the four summer schools within the three years that they be. Yes. So we will have at least one winter school. Oh, whatever. <laughs> summer and or just simply school. <laughs> Spring school. <laughs> okay. So, just to wrap up, uh, many people said already in the room that uh, the most important thing what we will do here is learn from each other. So, educate and learn. And learning is also true for the supervisors. I'm, I'm not a mathematician. I'm not a computer scientist. Uh, I also want to learn a lot from you and from your activities and from your research. I, I really think uh, uh, this diversity what we have uh, in this project is exciting and uh, has a lot of value. But in order to learn, we should not stop sharing. So we should really put an effort on sharing what we have, sharing what we know. 
even though I, I believe it will be very, very difficult at, some, at certain times because, because of the diversity. We are speaking uh, many different languages. Uh, also from an academic point of view, we speak different languages. So understanding each other's uh, concepts, theories, uh, methods will be, I think it will require long, long, long discussions where we need to be patient uh, with each other. But still, I think sharing is one of the key um, success criteria of, um, of the project. And we also shouldn't be afraid of making mistakes because learning is about making mistakes and learning from mistakes. And I'm quite sure we will, we will have those mistakes. Hopefully we will make mistakes early and learn early. So we can end up nicely at the end of the four years with uh, 12 um, uh, theses, uh, 70 plus articles uh, celebrating ourselves in our last winter school, how great we, are, we were. But still, um, there will be mistakes. We shouldn't be afraid of them, but we should be able to handle them. And I really believe that if, if this diversity comes together, if we share, if we learn, if we learn from our mistakes, we, we have the chance, we have the resources to make, uh, make an impact. Uh, make an impact not only in the academic uh, world, but also the world uh, around us. Uh, uh, I believe that uh, most of the research, what we do here, can be translated to everyday life uh, issues. And if we, if, we, if we will be able to translate that and tell this to people, uh, I think, uh, uh, yeah, I, I myself will be very happy, but I guess also the European Commission who uh, gives money for this project will be even happier. And for what is the most important for me, enjoy. Enjoy the process and enjoy, enjoy the research, enjoy the conversations, enjoy the time we're going to spend together. Uh, Enjoy the game tonight, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and 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 just uh, keep keep the spirit up and running uh, for these uh, for these uh, three four years. So that's all I wanted to say. Uh, I don't know if there are still any questions, uh, issues we need to cover, we need to discuss now. If not, I can just pick questions from there and. Uh, Kaba, <laughs> 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 are we meeting in this room during the Yeah, so this will be our uh, base, base uh, yes. room. Um, okay. For uh, them or for us? For the fellows, for the supervisor board meetings, we go to somewhere else, but it's a smaller. Mm -mm. Well. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank you, Kaba. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if there are no more issues. There is one last thing. We thought we can give you a small pre uh, present to sort of remember the project. Don't take this as a uniform. It's not a uniform. It's there, there are no obligations of wearing it. But we thought uh, maybe a small thing what you can take with you physically and, uh, uh, and, and, and use it in your everyday life uh, <laughs> might be quite nice. So Gary will help you. Uh, Gary has a big box somewhere in the back. So when we leave the room, just uh, ask for one of these hoodies.